Hey, McHenry County kids. Sorry we can't be with you in person, so we're gonna bring the clinics to you. Today is our clinic on patterns. There's three things that are the basics for patterns, and we're gonna talk about each of those in these little segments here. But first of all, you need to learn the pattern, practice it in pieces is the second step, and then put it all together. Okay, so for a pattern, it's kind of like putting a puzzle together. You look at the picture on the box, and you see what your ultimate goal is. But you have all the little pieces to put together to get there, and then ultimately, you can have the finished product. So, when you first get to a show, they will post a pattern. Some shows, they will give you the pattern in a piece of paper that you can take with you. Other shows, uh, you might have to go up and take a picture of it or write it down yourself. The best way that I found to remember a pattern and to practice a pattern is to write it down myself. So initially you can go up, take a picture so that you can get out of the way of everybody and then bring it back to your trailer or whatever and start drawing out the pattern. So take a piece of paper, look carefully at where everything is. Everything has a particular place. You're gonna be looking for the placement of the cones, the spacing, where you're going to make transitions and you have to be able to plan ahead for where to stop and start and things like that. Let's start with reading through the pattern. Read the written directions first and then make sure it makes sense with the picture. So first, be ready at A. Jog from A to B. Stop at B and perform a 360 degree turn to the right. Lope on the right lead to C. Even with C, break to an extended jog and circle to the right. Stop at C and back one horse length retire to the rail or line up at a jog. So let's break this down. Be ready at A. Here's A. You're gonna be standing here ready with your horse at A. Jog from A to B. You're gonna jog a nice straight line. You don't wanna be zigzagging. This is where you would look up and plan where you're going as you're sitting on your horse. Now it says all the way to B. So once you get to B, I would stop with your horse's shoulder to B. So stop at B, perform a 360 turn to the right. So while you're on your horse, you're gonna cue your horse to turn this way to the right. So you're gonna spin around 360 and then face this way again. That's why it's really important to have good spacing between B so you don't run into the cone. Then you're going to step three, lope on the right lead to C. Once you're done with your turn, you don't wanna to wait too long. You wanna to try to signal for your horse to go you don't want to be having too many pauses and breaks in between. So lope on your right lead to C. Make sure it's the right lead. When even with C, you're going to break to an extended jog. Okay, the judge does not want to see you stop or do anything else except go from a lope to a jog. You're going to circle to the right around this cone here. You want your circle to be nice and even. You don't want to make it oblong this way or crazy far out that way and then cut it short, nice, even, 20 meter circle. Stop at C and then back a horse length. Make sure you back at least four solid steps. You're going to retire to the rail or line up at a jog. That means wherever the ringmaster directed you to, that's where they want you to go. Usually you wanna take the quickest route out, so you're not gonna go all the way around some crazy direction. If the rail is closer here, just exit that way. And you're supposed to exit at a jog. If you do not, if you exit at a walk, that's still part of a pattern and you could be uh, marked down for that as well. So when you plan it, set up your cones evenly and then plan about, you want a little more than a horse length here so that you can get through your turn without running into the cones. If you happen to do that, if you go on the wrong side of the cone or if you run into the cones, you will be penalized or disqualified. So the next step in breaking down your pattern after you have written it and after you have viewed it and practiced it on paper here, you're going to set up your cones so that you can get spacing down. You're not setting up your cones for your horse, you're setting it up for you. So you can make it on a miniature scale. And it might seem silly to do this, but if you personally go through it, you have a better mindset going into your ride of how you are going to attack this pattern, rather than being on the horse, trying to control your horse, doing all these things, and then figuring out where to go. 
The best thing is to do it yourself. What I like to do is have somebody read it after I have gone through it in my head a couple times so that I can get it correct. So I have my reader. All right, be ready at A. Note that your cone, cones are on your right. Jog from A to B. Stop at B and perform a 360 degree turn to the right. Lope on the right lead to C. Even with C, break to an extended jog and circle to the right. Stop at C and back one horse length. Retire to the rail or line up at a jog. So you'll have to practice your pattern a few times to get all the pieces correct. This is why you wanna work on your transitions before you get on your horse so you realize the mistakes you might make beforehand. So it's one less thing to deal with. As you saw my pattern before, that worked out pretty well. You're going to go through my thought process now. So here's the one, two, three cones. We're going to start at A. Now, if I start really close to A, by the time I get to B, I'll be on top of it doing my 360 with my horse because horses have four legs, whereas we have two. So you have to make that space. So space yourself away from the cones so that your horse has enough room to turn. The first step was to jog. I'm going to jog. Remember, there has to be a difference between your jog and extended jog. I'm at B, whoa. Make my 360, so if I put my arm out, I'm not gonna hit that cone. 360 to the right. Okay, now I'm looking straight ahead to my next cone. I'm going to lift with my reins or however you have taught your horse to cue. I'm going to push with my outside, my left leg, to ask my horse for the right lead. So I'm gonna push for the right lead. The horse is going to lead with the right foot. And we're breaking down to the next transition here. Cantering, you have to be thinking way ahead. So by the time that cone came up pretty quick, you have to be thinking, okay, I'm gonna sit deep so that I can ask my horse to go into a jog, extended jog from that cone. You don't want your horse to stop like I did to demonstrate. Nice, even circle, turn your head around there to lead your horse in the direction that you're looking. And as you're coming around that circle to this cone, start thinking to stop before you get to it so you don't blow past the cone. You're gonna stop, back, back, back. The more subtle you can be on your cues, the better. If you're going crazy or if your horse will not pay attention or listen, it's best just to try a couple steps rather than fighting with them too much. Then release them and ask them to go forward again. Nice, easy jog. Don't give too much of a cue, otherwise your horse might want to canter off and you're off to the rail. Make sure you look at the judge and nod. So for those of you who are in the horseless horse, you can also do this pattern with your own horse. I'm all tacked up. You should have on a helmet if you are riding and have appropriate attire and tack on. We're gonna start our pattern. two things that I did wrong in that pattern. Okay, let's look. I started here. Oops, I'm on the wrong side of the cone. That right there is an immediate disqualification under most every judge. <laughs> okay, the second thing I did wrong, by the time I got through my whole pattern, I thought I was good after my circle and I stopped here. I jogged to the rail, but I forgot one thing back up. That happens a lot.
Okay, so this pattern, not so bad, but there were several things I could improve on. So first of all, my horse was a little feisty, but I remained calm the whole time. Horsemanship is judged on you and how you handle your horse and your situation. So the more calm and relaxed you are and the more collected you can be and make corrections, the more the judge is going to reward you points. So I started too close to the cones to begin with. By the time I got to B, as you can tell, when I did my pivot, I ran it over. Okay, that's gonna lose you some major points. So make sure you make that adjustment first. Then, my horse was a little wiggly and everything, but if that's going to happen, just ride through it. Do your best. Then, when I made my circle over here, actually before the circle, I did the wrong lead first. I started on the left lead, but I stopped and I corrected it. A judge is going to want to see you make that correction so that they know you understand what the correct lead is. That's horsemanship and equitation. Then, my circle was a little wonky, so I'm gonna work on that for next time. Make a nice, even circle. Stop. Back. Again, if your horse is backing a little crazy, just ask him for a little bit, just as much as you can. You don't wanna go forward and back and forward and back. Just back, whoa. Back again. If he doesn't want to, just continue with the pattern. Then I had a good finish to the pattern. that ride that one was actually what your pattern should look like for the most part make sure if you reward or praise your horse that it's when you are finished totally with the pattern the judge has looked away you shouldn't be touching your horse in any other parts if you are riding Western with a horse that is over the age of five in a curb bit you cannot use two hands in a Western class you will be disqualified for that as well so make sure your attack and your attire is appropriate the way that you handle your tack and your horse is appropriate and always, always make sure you have good sportsmanship. And even if you have a bad ride, just leave the arena knowing what you need to work on and you know, reward your horse for the effort that they gave. If you really want to get creative and if you're in the 4-H dog project as well, you may set up your patterns for your horse show and take your dogs through it. Some obedience training and some pattern work.